Hello again. Hello again. Hi, Cynthia. Um, okay, so let's just pick up where we left off. I had some people... Oh, no, it wasn't you. I'm sure it's because it's raining. I just went and unplugged our cell phone thing. We have a Verizon cell phone booster, so sometimes that will... If the signal's already low, which it is because it's raining, um, it'll drag it down even further. So, card decks... Post the names of your favorite card decks and tell me something you're proud of. Brag about something. Um, I'm a little low energy because I'm on my third day of being sick. Ah, right? I know. And I froze up and my face was all, you know, because I was looking at a dog in the yard right when it froze. Kuan Yin card deck is what I'm thinking of getting. It's beautiful. Just got mine yesterday. So, yeah, when that broadcast froze up, I was like, I hope that it didn't end on my face being all look like a stroke victim yeah let's check out Michelle's vintage ones okay I'm going to read you this part from Big Magic which has to do with um, healthy arrogance hi again Michelle (laughs) sorry about that post something to brag about post something you're proud of before we lose our signal again and I'm going to read to you this section stop it Soul shivers, a chill that you feel when you connect to your soul. Ooh, that's cool. A chill that you feel when you connect to your soul. You get a soul shiver. I like that. I like that a lot. What deck is that from? Okay, I'm going to read to you real quick. This comes from Big Magic. It's in the section on permission, which you don't need permission to be yourself. But sometimes we wait for people to give us permission. We wait to be picked for the team when we don't realize we're making up our own team. So we're nuts, basically. We try, but we're a little crazy. Um, So she says, you are probably a really good friend and wife and mom. I bet you're really loyal. Um... I bet you would teach me how to paddle boat if I could come to Puerto Rico. Except you wouldn't be able to because I'd be terrified of the fish and stuff in the water. So unless you could teach me to paddle boat on a swimming pool, (laughs) it wouldn't be happening. Okay. Ah, your personality shines through. I believe that a good, this good kind of arrogance, okay, let me back up. The arrogance of belonging is not about egotism or self-absorption. It's the opposite. It's a divine force that will actually take you out of yourself. Yeah. Linda, my fear is so irrational that seeing a manatee would throw me into a heart attack. Even uh, manatee, even though manatees are like the cutest little sea creatures ever. Often what keeps you from creative living is your self-doubt, your self-disgust, your self-judgment, your crushing sense of self-protection. The arrogance of belonging pulls you out of that. Not by saying, I'm the greatest, but just by saying, I'm here. I exist. I believe that this good kind of arrogance, this simple entitlement. Oh, your son saw manatee on his first day out on his own. What a gift. Yeah, and they're pretty sweet, right? They don't bite. Okay. This good kind of arrogance, simple entitlement to to exist and therefore to express yourself is the only weapon with which to combat the nasty dialogue. Wow, 11. That may automatically arise in your head whenever you get an artistic impulse. Okay, so we've talked about that. Um, as resistance. Welcome back, Dennis. Sorry about the interruption. My service is patchy in the rain. The nasty dialogue that may automatically arise within your head whenever you get an artistic impulse or creative impulse. Remember, we've talked about that being resistance. The minute you decide to express yourself is the minute you cut yourself off at the knees. Um, Healthy arrogance can help you overcome that. It's another tool in uh, resisting resistance or recognizing that resistance has no power. Oh, cool. Um, I'm talking about the nasty dialogue that goes like this, and I think we've talked about this in these exact words almost because it's so common. Who the hell do you think you are? 
trying to be creative. You suck, you're stupid, you have no talent, and you serve no purpose. Get back in your hole. Right? Okay? We hear that before we par- we periscope, use, uh, before we do a broadcast. Who do you think you are? You're no expert. Uh, we've talked about this so many times, that resistance that rises up, the power of darkness that fights against the expression of light. Yeah. You suck, you're stupid, you have no talent, and you may have spent a lifetime obeying that process until today. Because <clears throat> if you stay in these circles and you keep doing this work, you're going to have such an enormous tool belt to fight against that voice that cuts you off. To fight against the voice that grabs you by the throat and silences you. Um, that's the whole purpose of resistance. And you don't fight it. You just let it be. It is what it is. It is resistance. It's the counterbalance of light. You can't defeat it. You can't make it go away because we have yin and yang, light and dark, good and bad. We have those polar things and we learn to walk the razor's edge in between. We stand in the middle, that thin slice of being a little resistance and a little expression, a little light, a little dark. We're right in the middle if we're, if we're ideally, we're walking that razor's edge in between. So it's not that you're building a tool belt to hammer resistance on the head and make it go away. It won't go away. So accept that it's there and that every time you get a creative impulse, every time you go to have a class or start a scope or uh, make a mala bead for strand, whatever, every time you have that, you will feel resistance. So just know it's coming and know what to tell yourself to keep yourself going which is that you exist by your very existence is your right to express yourself just because you're here. You don't have to know anything. You don't have to be anything. You can allow yourself to see the gentleness in creation, which is where we started this morning. You are that. Just because you inhabit a body at this time gives you the right, not the privilege, the right to take up space to put your creations out into the world, whether that's creations of raising children or being a hell of a good budgeter or being a painter of masterpieces or a painter of finger paint drawings. Whatever the creative impulse is that you feel rise up within you, is meant to be born. It wouldn't rise up in you if it wasn't hoping that you would birth it into the world. And we know the process of birth is messy and difficult, but it doesn't stop it, right? Babies are born every day. Ideas are born in the same messy struggle way, but if you commit to the process, it resistance won't stop it it'll rise up you'll counteract it with your thoughts and your support from friends um your support from your perry family and you'll just keep on going and you'll birth your creation and i would say playing with cards and getting in touch with your intuition that's a creative outlet um detail cleaning my daughter calls that tweaker cleaning when you just hit a room and you just detail the hell out of it that's a creative expression That's energy coming in, feeling an impulse rise up, and taking action to bring it out into the world. And oftentimes that heavy-duty cleaning is uh, reflective of some mental cleaning that's going on. Um, So that's healthy arrogance. That's saying to that voice that, who do I think I am? (laughs) I'm me, bitches. I'm me, and I have stuff to create, and I have stuff to put out into the world, and that's what I'm going to do. And I hear you yelling over in the corner, and that's okay. Here's a bag of pretzels and a soda. Shut up. (laughs) Right. Tell that to those voices of resistance. Keep it down, bitches. (laughs) Okay, 
I didn't get your brag, though. You guys, send me something you're proud of. <laughs> you can tell us tonight on your scope, Michelle, if you're still here. She calls this a fierce sense of personal entitlement, which I hope you will learn to cultivate. So, yeah, I would recommend the book. It's good. It's good. I like how she writes. Here's a Coke and a pretzel. Watch me create, bitch. You ever watch Breaking Bad? <laughs> I love the way that character, Jesse, says, bitch. Okay, so that brings us back full circle to our reading for the day, which was In Love Was I Created and In Love Will I Remain Forever. Yes. Yes. What can frighten me when I let all things be exactly as they are? Yeah, it was good. It was a good series. Okay, that's all I got. I think I have to go lie down. <laughs> um, so I've got my, uh, I'm going to turn my alerts on today. In case you guys want to scope about anything at all <clears throat> and entertain me. <laughs> I'll be laying around doing a whole lot of nothing. If I have signal, I'll get on. So thanks for coming, as always. Thanks for the hearts and shares. Much love to you today, and um, you're so welcome. Thank you. I think, uh, I'm hoping that today will be the last, the last of the stomach issues. Oh, here comes my buddy. Come on. His feet are cold. That's why he gets up here. Oh, and he's wet. Ugh. He must have gone outside. Okay, I'll see you guys in the morning. Take care. And it's not going to let me... Okay, here we go. All right, now, bye-bye.